Hey everybody, my name's Coach Hart and I'm the owner operator of System Basketball and also the ad, one of the admins inside the Dribble Drive Motion Hoop Talk group. Um, welcome to today's uh, live. I'm gonna be talking about the Dribble Drive Motion Offense, kind of the 101 today, trying to get you some basic knowledge on it and hopefully you learn something. So if you can let me know in the comments below where you're joining me from, be interested to see where people are tuned in today, listening to this at, and also uh, what platform you're on. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, if you can pop that in the comments on either one of those for me, I'd appreciate it. Um, just a little bit of background about me. Um, I've been a high school basketball coach for 26 years, started coaching high school basketball in 1996. At age 21, I uh, took a freshman job at San Dimas High School and coached there for five years, then became a varsity head coach since then after five seasons. Um, how did I come about Dribble Drive? Um, 2008 is when I started uh, running it. Summer of 2007 is the development for me of Dribble Drive. We were playing in a summer league basketball game, and this is about my sixth season at Ballin Park, and we were losing to the school I started at, and we were down six with about a minute to go, and we, I called timeout and said, hey, we need to push the ball and attack the basket and either shoot layups or kick them out for easy shots, and then we were going to get in a press, make or miss, so Little did I know that was kind of the genesis of what dribble drive is, is attacking the basket, creating gaps, shooting layups or shooting threes, and then the pressing components. So I came about uh, Vance Wahlberg and studied it and studied it, and we implemented it at Bowen Park in 2008. And I've been running some form of it, either in the five out, four out, one in, pretty much exclusively from 2008 till now. Um, a few years ago, we, we added some spread, uh, high post offense as well. But today I would like to show you a little bit about what the core, what I think are the core concepts of the dribble drive motion offense. I'm going to bring up my screen here. And that's get this brand off. So you guys can see it better. All right, there we go. Okay, so dribble drive motion offense is based upon spacing and creating gaps. You, you're going to hear the words double gaps, triple gaps when people talk about dribble drive. Uh, today, I'm going to show you a little bit of how to do that, but I want to show you the spacing. So the spacing and dribble drive is slots. So the one in five, the five people don't freak out. Um, that is just another attacking guard. Uh, Vance Wahlberg did ones and fives in the backcourt or, or attacking, penetrating like point guards. The shooters or wing players are in the corners and your post is a four. He said nobody wanted to be a five, so he called his perimeter player a five. It was just some reverse psychology. I know when people are learning this for the first time, they're going, why is the five on the perimeter? And why is the four inside? That's the reasoning. Some of the diagrams, I'll have five in the in the short corner uh, dunker spot. Some of them I'll have four out there. Um, I'm an assistant coach at Roosevelt right now in Corona and Eastville. And we we've switched to the five being our post like normal and the four being the trailer guard. So some of my diagrams mix them. That numbering really isn't important. It's it's where the players are. So the first thing, first core principles, in my opinion, is the player, your team, the coach, the players need to understand the penetration, the penetration rules of the dribble drive. <clears throat> and I call that first one a lane penetration. So if one has the ball and they drive straight down the lane, that is a lane penetration for me. And you're going to have two other players in movement in this situation. Two is going to stay stay patient in the corner 
and four will move as that player is coming right now. Four is going to start curving their body and what people call clean up. So it's almost boxing out a player if they're outside them. So that if X3 goes to help and X4 goes to help, and we'll, we'll see an example of this here shortly. But now, what do we call these, these actions? Uh, this is where terminology is important. You can do it any way you want. For my, for my team, this player would be saying six. They're going behind six like a military term, like a, count, like a clock, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They're in their six. So if someone drives, we have to have someone fill behind in their six. We have to have somebody in the window is what we call this. It's a 45 area, finding an open area in here so that one can pass if people are helping. This area is just, it's just corner. And then this would be like dunker spot or clean up is, is other terms that we use. Okay. So that is lane penetration. That would be going down the right lane in the two gap, two side being the right side of the floor for us, the two side. And if we switch to the other side, I can't switch the numbers here quickly, but that would be the three side of the floor for us. And that's what it would look like if we were driving the lane on the left side. The next penetration is a baseline penetration. And this is usually out of transition or a, or a call. You may use this against no middle defense, something like that. I did a presentation on that the other night. Um, and if you throw to the two and they drive it, we have to know what our penetration rules are for this. So when we drive baseline, I, I talked about being in a six. So one would be the six this time, filling behind a penetration. Got to have somebody always filling behind penetration. This is called a tee up. The reason why is courts used to have lines here and it meshed there. That's why I think people refer to it as a tee up. You got to have somebody in the opposite corner. We call this the drift option. And then five would be your window option. So those are your options if someone elected to drive baseline. Okay. And now we have middle penetration. And this can be from two places on the floor, from the wing or from the slots. Let's look at it from the slots and let's look at what the rules are again. Okay. So when we drive, we have to have somebody go behind. So five is in the six right now. As they're cracking the top of the key area, nail area, five should start to begin his coming across. So that's your six. But if you notice, they didn't pass the basketball because they were able in this in this animation, they're able to beat their man. So when they get to this block, the penetration rules all stay in effect. You have to have somebody opposite block. You have to have somebody in the window. And you have to have somebody in the six. And, you, and your other player is in the dead corner, opposite, same side. Okay. So now what if we do it? If the player has it on the wing, okay, same actions. We're going to go here. They go behind. If they get a little bit further to the basket, four would drag back behind them and get into their six. Three is going to read here. And we're going to get into these. Three is going to have the option. If X3 helps, they're probably going to lift. If X3 is hugging here, and they pick up the ball, you can set up a back cut, which I refer to as a drop. Okay, so those are some of the core principles on the penetration actions. Now, what happens if you're not able to get to the basket? 
Well, most people will stop in the elbow area, which is referred to as the drop zone. So we're going to stop there in the drop zone. And then the player out of that corner is going to play a kick up game. It's a two man game. And the post rule is always to get opposite the ball. So on this pass, four is going to get opposite to open up that middle drive for two. Now five is doing the, the dragging six action behind them. And three would have that option again out of that corner to play backdoor or stay based upon they could stay, they can backdoor, or they can lift out of that corner. Those are the three actions that that player can do. And it's all about teaching them reads and, and how to play out of this dribble drive penetration system here. What, what is this action called? What is a kickback? Okay. A kickback is if X5 decides to help on this penetration. This is where the five comes. So if X5 was here, they have to help, and now they have to recover. This could be a jump shot. This could be a bad closeout, and we drive. One would fill and replace. So 90% of the time, whoever you pass to, you replace in this offense. Okay, so we have kickups, kickbacks. Those are important if you're getting stalled around the, the elbow area, the drop zone area. Those are the two main actions that people use out of getting stalled in those areas. Now, if we drive and what will happen in this offense is X4 will come help. X2 will go help. So it's helping the helper. So when you're in this area of the floor, two will start to lift because you don't want three players in a line in this offense. You Because X4 would be able, X2 would be able to guard four and two, and also one would not be able to see two. So two needs to get into that window area. The window. And on that pass, it's where I said 90% of the time they're going to fill. Well, we usually fill it because we I don't usually have a dominant post player. If you have a dominant post player, instead of one filling to the two side corner, they could fill out to this side, and now you would have a duck in and post up opportunities. It's a little bit of more advanced stuff for today. so. We're going to do it what normal what what normally happens is there. So off of this now, this is where it's important to teach your penetration rules. If you drive middle, four is getting to that dunker spot. Five would be dragging behind in the six. One, if they start getting a little bit further, one's now going to get to the window so that one can't help off of that penetration and three is going to make their drop read or their kick up reads. Okay. A drag three would be the opposite side of the floor. Okay. Let's take a look at this. So you can kind of see it in a game action here. They're going to come. So they passed and they swung the basketball, and they're doing a wing penetration middle here. As you can see, the whole all the defense is sucking into the paint, did not commit. These two players are guarding her, so she's going to read the action and make a pass. So now this player has what they're looking for in your offense. This is a, this is a catch and read offense. So now she has a shot opportunity, or is she going to read bad closeout drive? What is she going to do? Okay. She elected to shoot the jump shot off the late closeout. So that's, that is a drag action with a window pass for you. 
Okay. So a drag five or a drag four, depending on what this position is up here, we just label it that I don't, that this is Vance's terms. I've gotten away from using the word drag with the number. This is why we call it a six. So as they're driving, if X five's player is sinking in the lane, my player is yelling six, six, six to let the player know behind them, to let the offensive player know that they're open behind them. Okay. And now one goes to the corner and and three comes. So now off of this action, five has choices, shoot it, drive it, or move it. That's what this offense is all about. Shoot it, drive it, move it, play in 0.5 conceptual basketball. So now we're going to have slot, slot, corner, corner filled. And, and if five decides to go down the lane, all your players should know the lane penetration rules. If he or she decided to go middle, they should know the penetration rules. If she wants to pass it, if she wants to pass it to the three, she can, he or she. And now this player would get into what is called creating a gap because we want to pass through single gaps and dribble through, dribble and drive through double and triple gaps. In this situation, how would we create a double or triple gap? As you can see, between five and three would be considered a single gap. Five and two is a double gap. So how would five create a gap for three? They could either cut corner or they could shallow cut to the wing. Those are the two main cuts. When I'm teaching this offense at an introductory level to my freshman team, and youth teams to get them started. There are some advanced cuts that we could teach, but they need to understand the core principles first. So if that was the case, five would be over here on the wing and you'd have that gap. Let's look at what a drag throw behind to the six looks like in a game. Okay, she created, see how she cut? She created a gap to drive. And now she picked it up. And a good term to teach your players is, does she need space or does she need help? So now she's playing a two-man game with the player out of the corner, but she didn't like that because she's being denied. She didn't make any move, so she threw it to this player. Now, what do we have? We have a bad closeout opportunity to drive the floor and get into our DDM principles. So she's going to do a straight line drive and got a two foot pull up on balance in lane. Okay. Now, let's talk about drop actions, back doors. How do you get back doors in this offense? You set them up. So let's look at a drop, what a drop three would be. This could be a call or this could happen organically once your players understand concepts. We're going to do a shallow cut to create that gap. And one's going to drive hard and three cut. Three on my diagram cut a little too soon. They should not be making their move to cut until they see the shoulders to the sideline and the players starting to pick up the ball because that's basically telling them they've given up their opportunity to drive and now they need help. So let's take a look at this action in a game. There's your loop. There's your loop. She got stopped, prevented her penetration. So we have a defender here. She's up the line, so this player kind of knows she's going to set him up for a back door. If she was flat to the baseline, she would probably raise for a kick up. Okay, here's your back door opportunity. Good bounce pass. We teach bounce passes. 
I would like to see this player flashing, calling for the ball to take this defender away. Majority of time when you teach drops, it's this player that is going to steal the ball, not this player. So this player needs to read this player right there to make that pass. Okay. Now, if she's not open because we don't have three players in the line and they wanted to help, say X2 helped, we would have our drift past the corner. Now, one would fill out over here to get behind her in a six. A drop pass throw is the same concept as someone driving. We have to have somebody in their six. Okay. And this player is in the tee-up area. So if X5 would have helped, you could have got this pass to here, and they can't help and recover in that situation for a secondary action if your immediate layup is not open. Okay. Now, how do you start combining the actions? You're not going to get it immediately. You're going to have to have some patience and teach being aggressive and multiple penetrations. You're, you're not going to let, they're not going to let you just drive once and score. It don't matter what you run. If a team allows that, you're going to beat them anyways. So you got to prepare for the teams that make it tough for you. So here's a kick up. And as you can see, now we're in our wing penetration middle. Five would come behind. And then we got a little bit of movement here. So that's combining a kick up to a kickback. So those are two core principles that we combine together. And that's how you get into the dribble drive flow, if you will. I get questions all the time is I have trouble with the continuity. I cringe when I hear the word continuity. It's not a continuity offense. It will look like a weaving aspect of it. But if you're just weaving high above the three-point line, you're, you're not running dribble drive. Every time you drive, you would like to have the mentality that they get a piece of the paint, two feet into the paint. That is what I try to teach. Now let's look at what it would kind of look like to give you an idea here of a possession where all four perimeter players get it and we get a layup. So there we got a kick up to a kick back. I mean, to a kick up to kick up. And now we have, now we're going to have a kick back. And now what's the rules for the post? They got to get opposite the ball. What's the rules? We have to have opposite. We have to have window. We have to have six. So all in this possession, we are we have great spacing, which would have led to this layup. They couldn't help because the players were spaced properly. All four players, there should only be at most three people ever inside the three-point line. The penetrator, a backdoor cutter, and a post. But most of the time, it's going to be two players inside that three-point line. You got to get your players to space outside the three-point line. Okay, now let's look at how do we create the gap to begin with. If we're going to bring the ball up with our point guard, and, we, and our point guard is going to initiate this offense, we, I would call this a five loop or a five shallow cut. Five is going to cut through and empty out, and it opens up a big gap. So if we take these lines off and we see this is a triple gap that they're attacking. X3 is going to have to make a decision. Do they help if they this player gets beat, or do they stay? Well, if they help, it's going to be an easy pass to the corner for a three-pointer. If they bluff, stay. That's where your players need to play through arms and attack the rack and finish. If they just see an arm in their way, they need to proceed. If they see the sternum, they need to stop. Otherwise, it's going to be an offensive foul. Okay, so again, we're getting to our spots. We have window, six, Strong side corner, 
weak side block filled. That is the basic core components of the spacing right there. When the ball is in the block area referred to by a lot of people as the rack zone. Okay. Now we don't want to do a shallow cut. They're switching. They're packing it in at the nail. We run a through cut. So that would take fives man deeper into the paint and even create a bigger gap. Same actions. Okay. So those are my basic components there. Now, you may ask, well, point guards defended, X5s here. Well, we would start it with a pass. And now one could shallow or, or through cut. And now five can attack it to the two side of the floor. Another thing that we could do is you want to incorporate your corner players into this offense. You want to get them driving. So we could make a one to four. To three pass and four is going to four is going to cut one's going to cut and we have three here attacking this huge gap downhill so those are ways that you guys can run this offense what i love about it and what i'm going to give you some final thoughts today and then let you know about a three-day event me and Kurt Gelsdorf have coming up that I'll drop a link inside the YouTube here and I'll put it inside the Facebook group for you to join us next week for three nights where we're going to dive into this more in a little bit more details and give you guys drills and, and some more sets and entries to go in, install this for like a summer camp setting for your program. If you, if you're interested in running this. So my final thoughts on running this offense is I like to teach – I think this offense can be ran with anything because it's, it's a framework. It's a penetration attack mindset that you could pair with Princeton, high post spread, European ball screen, um, five out concepts. You can you could pretty much put this with anything out there and my question usually to everybody is this. If they've took your set play away, they've taken your, your continuity, your flex, your Euro ball screen, what are you going to have to do to go score? I'm going to say nine out of ten times, you're going to have to put the ball on the floor and attack the basket. So do your teammates, do you, as a coach, your players, do they understand where to space on the floor and do the players understand those reads so they know their bailouts, drift corner, window, six, tee up. Do you have that in? Because I was a flex coach and teams would switch us. They would pack it in the lane. They would do all this stuff. It made it really difficult for us to score. So I had to come up with something that would develop players to make plays. And a myth about this is you have to have Derrick Rose from Memphis. When he was at Memphis, you have to have this. You have to have that. No, you don't. You have to have some tough kids that want to get to the basket that you could teach some things to them to help them finish, shoot the basketball, and a little bit of ball handling. And my opinion, if you are – well, I don't have that. Well, if you're a flex coach, and I was, if they do practice on their own and they go to the park, they're not going to go to the park and practice a flex cut. They're going to practice ball handling, driving, finishing moves, and shooting the ball. So it's built in to what you do. I think it's a great skill development offense. So 
what I would like to, to share with you guys is on all right. on next Tuesday, May 10th, starting on Tuesday, Kurt Gelsdorf and I are going to do a three-day event. It's free to join. It's on. It's going to be here on YouTube and inside the Facebook group to watch. We're going to be going over three days of some more of what I taught today, drills to implement for your posts, your perimeters to teach in camp for short numbers, whole team. And then we're going to go over some more film study for you over the course of three days to show you why we love this offense. Kurtz ran it a little bit longer than me. He's the associate head coach at Clackamas. He's another admin inside the Dribble Drive Motion Hoop Top group. If you're on YouTube watching this and you're interested in this, I highly re recommend that you join the Facebook group, um, Dribble Drive Motion Hoop Talk community. If you search that, you'll find it. There's also a link inside the YouTube description of this video right now for you to come join us. Um, we share ideas. We do lives. I do some lives like this on occasions. So does Kurt. And we do some training on Dribble Drive for you. <coughs> there's also in, on the YouTube, there's a free DDM playbook if you're interested in, in dropping an email in there and signing up. So to sign up for this event, I'm going to throw it up right here in the, in the comments. Okay. So that's on YouTube. And I'm going to go put it in the Facebook group here in a second for you to sign up for that. And by signing up, you're going to get the details of more on, on the links, how to join us, reminder messages of when we're doing it and so forth and so on. So I hope you learned a little bit today on dribble drive motion offense. And I would love for you guys to join me and Kurt next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, May 10th, 11th and 12th. And if you're not following me on social media, let me at Coach Mark Hart, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I put daily plays up pretty much almost daily, maybe sometimes multiple times a day. You can you can check out the, the Instagram, the Twitter, and and hit me on Facebook Messenger or Facebook if you have any questions. So We'll see you guys next Tuesday night, May 10th, for Dribble Drive Motion Training Camp. Thanks, thanks for hanging out with me today and joining me.